Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Marhaban bikum, welcome to you all Ismi Ja'far wa hada barnamej ta'alim al-lugat al-arabiyya I am Ja'far, my name, and this is the program of Arabic learning So inshallah we welcome you back to another program And uh, so far we are focusing on the writing of the Arabic language And this is where we start As we said in the first program, when people speak the words go into the air and they disappear. But we have a new way of preserving words, which is writing them down. So once things are written down, they remain, as long as the material in which it is written remains. But once we speak, as long as the waves get into the ear, it's gone. So now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down a book. The book was the Quran, and the Quran has been preserved in the hearts of men they, and women who memorize it and also they teach it to others. However, as soon as a person dies, they die with what they have memorized. But when a person writes it down, then they can die and leave a book. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, part of what he said is like part of the ajr, the rewards, the continuous rewards that go on once a person dies is aw mushafan warrata or a Quran which was written down and passed on so it's very important this art of writing another thing history during the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the Arabs were not writers they would memorize everything a person would go on a journey and everyone would gather around and they give them the message like uh, you're traveling to Mecca. When you reach Mecca, say hello and tell them, and then they would read, recite like a poem. And the person would have to memorize that poem and memorize the other message and memorize the other message. They had good memories. However, when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came, he changed the entire Meccan society. First, he made the people write down what he was saying. You know. Everything that he said was being written down. One of his companions once went out and the, the people say like, do you write down everything Muhammad says? And he says, yes. And the people say, but he's human. Sometimes he makes mistakes. So you can record everything and some of it could be wrong. And this companion went back to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, like they are complaining that we should not write down everything. And the Prophet said, uktub. Write down everything I say. Because I swear by God, in whose hands my soul is, everything that comes out of that mouth, the mouth of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the truth. So the Muslims started writing. And then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, gave a command for Muslims to teach their children how to write. And then whenever a person became a Muslim, the first thing they would be taught is how to read and write. So the Muslim society at the time of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was a literate society. Each and every Muslim had to learn how to read and write. So they were already Arab, so they knew the language. All they had to do is write it. But, so we also starting the same, but then the language, inshallah, for those who don't know Arabic, We'll go over, after reading and writing, we'll start learning the language itself. But on this part of the programs, we are doing Arabic reading and writing. So this is the background to the reading and writing of Arabic and how it spread. And basically, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa let his people write so that they can record the Quran. See, the Quran, uh, not everyone is a memorizer of the Quran. So it's also a good thing to have a backup. 
So the Quran was written down. And every time the angel Jibreel would come to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, give him a section of the Quran called a surah, or we can roughly translate it as chapter or as some set of verses, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam would call his companions and tell them, write. And once they wrote down the Quran, he would ask them, like, read what you've, you have written. And they would read what they have written. And then he would say, okay. Then it will be stored along with what was written previously. This happened for a number of years. Until finally the entire Quran was compiled in written form. Like it was all written down. But several, several separate people had separate copies because... Not everyone was always present when the Quran was coming down. But eventually after that, people teach others, others copy from others, like that. Now, this is just introducing the background to this Arabic language. Now, let's dive into our session today. And the first five minutes, inshallah, of this part, we are going to revise. You know, revision is always important, you know. Once one of my teachers used to say, Iqra alifan wa karrir alfan. Like read one letter, like alif, and repeat it a thousand times. So he would say, that one we call it, Alif. So Alif is the first letter. It says you read this one and then once you read Alif, you repeat it for a thousand. We say Alf. Alf. So Alfun means a thousand and Alifun means Alif. So you read Alif and you repeat it a thousand times. So we are going to repeat, revise, then after that we are going to move on to the new lessons. So, so far, this is what we've covered. We've covered S in English, in Arabic, seen, but they have the same sound, S. We've covered dal, which is like the, the D in English. We've covered ra, which is like the A in English. And we've covered noon, which is like ain in English. Mm. Arabic is a shallow language. By shallow we mean what you see is what you say. So the writing of Arabic, all you have to do is look at the sound and pronounce it. You know, we don't have a lot of silent letters or letters which change their pronunciation. Or there's very small variation. You know, but basically what you see it's what you say, and most of the time you'll be okay. All you have to do is to be careful when you read the short and long vowels, but otherwise, it's all the same. So now, after this four, you also covered Alif, which is red, A, then you have Wow, that's the name of this letter, Wow, and Wow is red, U, like broom or room or something like that, suit in English, you know. Then you have E, and E is a long vowel. We say E, it's like a double E, like sea, breeze, and such words, need. Then we have the short vowels, and we only have three of them. We have a, u, 
E. A U E. So from the beginning, this is all we've learned, and we've learned a lot from just this uh, four consonants and three long vowels and three short vowels. What else have we learned so far? We've learned that the letters are divided into two. We have connectors and non-connectors. We have sin. It has another form which is s. Then we have noon. It has another form which is written this way. But the pronunciation is all the same. It's all uh, the scene is s and the noon is n. And then we also have the other letters which do not connect. We have dal. This one, once we write it, we do not connect anything at the end. There. Nothing is connected there. But for the noon, we can connect something for the scene. We can connect another letter. But for the dal, once we've written it, we cannot connect anything. Then we also have ra. Also, here, once we write the ra, we cannot or we do not connect anything at the end. If we want to write another letter, we just start on some space there. But we don't connect anything to the ra. Okay? Now, before we go for the break, let's finish uh, up on the vowels. We have a, that's the long vowel, a. Once we write it, we also don't connect it. We just start from some space go onwards. We don't connect anything to the alif. Then we have the wow. When we write it, we also don't connect anything. We just start from some space and proceed. We can write other letters, but we don't join a letter at the end of alif, up or down, or at the end of wow. And then we have ya. Ya is a connecting vowel, so we can write ya. The e sound, e, but this one has another form. We can write it in the other form, and then when we want to connect something, we can connect it from there. We can have another wow or something, but it can, it's a connector. So basically, this is what we've covered. These are the sounds we've covered. And inshallah, in the next part of the program, we are going to look at totally new sounds. We have ba, ta, kaf, mim, and other sounds. And inshallah, in the next part of the program, we come up with new vowels and we connect it to what we've learned before. So, uh, with this, in, uh, having said this, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See you after the break. Marhaban bikum. Welcome back. And now it's time to write. So get your pen and pen and paper. Yeah, not pen and pen. Pen and paper. Pen, kalamun, and paper, warak or waraka. Kalamun and waraka. Pen and paper. And now we start writing. So today we are going to start with the sound ba. This is like b, the b in English. B. Ba is a connector. We pronounce it with by closing the lips. B, b, b. You know, come from there. B. It's a hard sound. You know, a softer version. If we make it soft, it goes. Pa, 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 pa. But this is ba, 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 ba. By the way, there is no p in Arabic, only ba. Now, an Arab would say petrol, they say 
petrol. No? Say Peter, they will say Peter. What is your name? Peter. Say your name is Peter. You know? B. They never say P. That's why they change it. They both come from the lips. P and B come from here. Now let's start. So we have B at the beginning of a word. It connects to what comes next. So if we had a B, then we have an A. Uh, it becomes B. We read it. B. We've seen this with Na, Sa, and the rest. B. How do you read this? B. Ri. Do. That's an I. That's an U. E O. That's an R. And that's an I. Ba ri do. Ba ri do. Okay? Another word, for example, we can write. So it's the same B sound. B has only one dot at the bottom. And a dot at the bottom. So we have B and below it we have an I. So it is B. B do ni. B do ni. Mm -hmm. Another sound. Bad ru. Bad ru. Here in the middle we have a sukun, the like circle thing. It means there is no vowel here. So it is bad ru. Bad ru. Next. We read this B bin ta bin ta. You see, this is the N sound in the middle. The difference between a B and an N, a B has a dot down, and an N, the dot is up there. So when we write them together somewhere, for example, here. We have the B, the dot is down, B, and the N, the dot is upward. So we say, bin, ta, bin, ta. That is the A sound. Bin, t, a, bin, ta. Oh, you have not studied the T. Okay, T has two dots. Now you've known, bin, ta. Then we have ba, the B sound in the middle. We have something like let me put this here since you're already using it. That's a T with two dots. So na ba two. Naba two. That's an N, the dot is up, a B, the dot is down. N up. B down. Uh, I don't know. N n up. So you just say nap. The N, the dot is up. So you say N U P nap. Keep that in mind so that the B is down. So we have na. Ba two. Na ba two. Good. Uh-huh. 
another word sa sab ta sab ta the b in the middle now let's do two words where we have the b at the end we can have a word like ba bu ba bu b at the big at the b at the beginning and also b at the end ba bu uh -huh. another word now we have sa that's an r sa ra ba sa ra ba sa ra ba you know the long vowel is on the ra so sa ra ba and you say the arabs don't say ra they say ra so sa ra ba Now, we've seen examples with ba. Now let's go to ta. We get a few words with ta. You've already seen it in binta and some other word. So we have a word like there is the t. So we have tura bu tu tura bu tura bu means the soil soil turab so adam the first man was made from the soil from tura bu uh -huh. we have another word like So we have a ta and a d and an alif. Ta da, that's a long one. Ta da rasa. Ta da rasa. Ta da rasa. Okay? We have, let's have two words in the middle. For example, ra ti ba ra ti ba ra ti ba and another one sa ta with two dots sa tad rusu sa tad rusu Whenever you see two dots up, it's a T. And if you see two dots down, it's an E, it's a Ya. Two dots down. E, two dots up, T. Now you see, we need to start focusing. Because one dot up, it's an N. One dot down, it's a B. Two dots up, it's a T. Two dots down, it's an E, the long vowel. So, in Arab, mind your dots, you know. These are dot com people. Like, many dots. They really have dots. They're all over, all over. Now, let's get to a T somewhere at the end. We can have something like... Darasta means... You studied. Daras ta. In Arabs, when you, they want to say you did something in the past, you will hear the ta at the end. Daras ta. Akal ta. Zahab ta. Fahim ta. The ta means you. So when an Arab tells you something ending with a ta, no, they are saying you did something. You know? Fa'alta. You did it. 
fa'alta you did what did i do you know, you know but fa'alta determines you at the end of verbs now we have uh ba na tu banatu banatu means girls so banatu girls or daughters actually more specifically is daughters banatu banatu but first we are just learning how to write uh, write and read these words the meaning inshallah will come later banatu Okay, I think today we'll let's just do this too. Ba and ta. Ba and ta. Question, how many dots do we have on a ba? One dot. Up or down? Huh? Down. When the dot is up, it's a what? It's a noon. It's an N. When the dot is up, it's an N. When the dot is down, it's a bar. Okay. What about two dots? When you have two dots up on this thing, it looks like a bar, but two dots. It's a ta. With that, it's a T. Two dots up is always a T. Here. See? Two dots up, it's a T. One dot down. It's a B. Uh-huh. What about one dot up? It's a noon. And one dot down? It's a bar. Two dots up? It's a T. And two dots down? It's a yeah. Two dots down is a yeah. Don't make a mistake. Here. Two dots down. That's the long vowel E. The long vowel, E. Okay, let's put another one here. That's an N. Now, we need to start focusing. One dot down, it's a B. One dot up, it's an N. Two dots up, it's a T. Two dots down, it's an E. So, inshallah, tomorrow or the next episode, we are going to do a K and an M. K, K, and M, mm. K, and Ma, here, K, and Ma, inshallah. So, until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're learning the alphabet, alphabet.